Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for what will probably be my final pregnancy update. Fingers crossed that it's the last one. So my last update was uploaded just after 37 weeks and we've had kind of a whirlwind since that update. I'm super out of breath um, so I'm apologizing for that in advance. So uh, I'm just going to get right into this. At my last, my 37 week update, I think I had mentioned to you guys that everything was going fine. Um, my gestational diabetes test had come back negative and we were just kind of seeing what was going on. Um, they also, I believe, started cervical checks at 37 weeks um, and nothing, everything was, you know, just totally normal. Um, so I went back to my doctor's office at 38 to be, you know, checked and examined and um, still was not dilated at 38 weeks. There was nothing going on. Everything was just, just there. Um, at 38 and three days, um, it was that Saturday, I was laying in bed and noticed that baby girl had not been moving and she's usually super active at night and had not, she had just not been moving for a couple hours. So I did everything that they tell you to do. I had cold juice, I laid on my side, like went through all of that and she still wasn't moving so we went to the emergency room. Um, so at 38 and three, they went ahead and admitted me, did some monitoring, did an NST, noticed that her heart rate was a little bit variable, and we were admitted for um, an induction. So they decided at that point that they were gonna go ahead and induce us. I will link um, on our vlogging channel, I will link that in the description box, and if I can put it in the cards, I will, but um, and I did some, some vlogging while we were there. But we did get admitted for an induction, and clearly, if I'm sitting here filming this, um, then you know the induction was a failure. Um, I was given four doses of Cytotec, two orally and two vaginally, and um, failed to progress, had no progression pretty much whatsoever, um, and they discharged us um, saying I was at one centimeter and possibly 50 to 80% effaced. So for those of you who have ever been pregnant or know somebody who's ever been pregnant, you know that all of that's really subjective based on who you see. Um, they offered for us to be a little bit more aggressive with the induction and we chose not to. We went ahead and chose to go on home. So there's that. With all of that, they advised that I go to my doctor's office the next day for another NST and just kind of let them know what was going on. And as you guys are very well aware, I'm not a huge fan of this doctor's office. So we went back and um, went to the doctor. They did an NST, everything was fine. She's fine, she was nice and comfortable in there. And they did another check um, and the midwife that saw me said, you're not even a one. So just to put in perspective for you guys how all of that kind of made me feel, um, I had had no less than 10 cervical checks in 24 hours. I was very irritated and things were swollen and very uncomfortable. And to be told that nothing had changed and that I had possibly regressed was just really disheartening. Um, so it's been an emotional kind of last couple of weeks with all of that. So they considered that my 39 week appointment. I did not go back um, at 39 weeks. Uh, but I was seen on Wednesday of this past week on my due date. So when they checked me on Wednesday, um, the day I was actually due, I was rechecked and told I was one and a half centimeters and 70% effaced. So we're making a little bit of progress at least. Um, I've not been having any regular contractions, just Braxton Hicks. And um, the doctor went ahead and performed a sweep. And that uh, it went well. I mean, you know, I've been losing parts of my mucus plug and that's been really great, but no contractions um, and obviously no baby. So we go back today for another NST just to see how she's doing. At my 40 week appointment, my blood pressure was a little bit high for me, but I think it was situational. The doctor also believes that it was situational. Um, she checked it a second time before I left. It was still a little bit elevated, but um, it was coming down. So she thinks that it was situational, you know, in that moment. But we are going back today to see. So um, I say all of that to say that we do have an induction date 
So, um, if baby girl does not make her arrival before Tuesday, March 19th, I will be induced then. Well, I'll be induced March 20th. So, for those of you who have never had an induction before, um, I've had a kind of one. I mean, I technically did an induction, it just failed. Um, but I was told that I will have to go to the hospital the morning of the 19th, do some what they're calling a pre-op appointment, even though there's no, hopefully, op to be had. Um, fill out paperwork and do those types of things, and then I will go back to my doctor's office to check for dilation. If I am dilated and things are going well, then they will bring me in the morning of the 20th, Wednesday. If I am not dilated, then they will bring me in the night of the 19th to begin the induction then. So we have an official date uh, for baby girl to make her arrival no later than March 20th. She will be, as Anaya says, evacuated. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we just, we don't know. We still have a few days before then. It's Friday, March 15th, so we still have four days until that appointment. Um, five days until the actual scheduled induction and we shall see what is going on with her so at this point um, I'm not gonna go into like what she's the size of because she's giant sized I feel like we have not had a growth scan in a few weeks so I don't know how much she's weighing at the moment but I'm willing to bet she's about eight to eight and a half pounds oh and she's taking up so much room so how I'm feeling right now, um, it is a little bit discouraging to go past 40 weeks. Not that I don't think that it's going to happen. Like she's coming. I know she's going to be born. That's not the, the crisis here, but they also kind of tell you like 40 weeks and that's it. So, you know, there's that. I'm very anxious to meet her. I am not anxiety ridden in terms of scared. I'm just really um really looking forward to her being here everything's ready we're ready for her i'm just i'm ready to meet her and see her um we're just really we're very excited about her coming uh so it's been hard to focus kind of on what you know needs to be done around the house and work and things like that because we're just really excited to to meet her um I'm just feeling very um, large and in charge right now. She's she's really taken up all the space. She has like no more room in there. Um, and I and I are trying to enjoy our last couple of evenings together, just the two of us, before she comes. Uh, I believe we're going to the movies tonight, just to you know do something. All my symptoms are pretty much the same. It's just a little bit of swelling in the hands and feet. Nothing outrageous. Um, I'm super tired. I'm not getting any sleep and um, you know just just ready. I'm just really ready. That's the best way I know how to describe it. So with that being said, um, we do plan on vlogging a little bit during labor. Um, the hospital has a no like filming policy during delivery so I'm not really sure you know what footage we'll be able to get but I will we will have a labor and delivery vlog that we will put out. Um, at some point after she's born, I'm not really sure what all is going to go into that or how much footage we're going to have or how much we're going to have to edit. Um, and then once we're home and settled and comfortable, I will introduce you to baby girl and I'm very excited about that. Um, but until then, we're just kind of playing the waiting game. So also her nursery is finished, but we did put her name up in her nursery, so we will not be sharing that until after she's born. I'll probably film that over the weekend if I have some time and get it edited um, and put that out next week um, after she comes. We'll have that out there. So we shall see. But um, I know this was short. There was a lot of stuff missing, you know, three weeks worth of time that needed to get covered. But not a whole lot happened except for our failed induction. Um, and we do have an induction date scheduled. Oh, I did want to mention they were able to move our induction back to the original hospital that we were planning to deliver at. So um, if we go into labor spontaneously or not, we still have um, our original hospital, which is awesome. So we're really excited about that. 
If you have any questions or anything, go ahead and put them in the, the comment section down below and I will um, get my do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. But until then, it is just baby watch. You know, we're just waiting. So um, let me show you guys the belly and then I will get off of here. If Bailey will let me up and kind of see her there. All right, so, oh, this is 40 and two. And there she is. I got dog hair all over my shirt. Sorry about that. And we're just really ready for her to be here. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I will link the failed induction vlog um, in the comment or in the description box. And I will see you guys probably next week and hopefully with our brand new baby girl or at least our labor and delivery vlog. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye guys.